will be seeing, I think, much more use of psychedelics initially as medicines, um, also drug policy reform, we're moving forward in that area. You know, MAPS that I started in 1986, now 35 years later, we've raised uh, over $130 million in grants and donations. We have no investors. We have about 125 people. We've completed one successful phase three study of MDMA-assisted psychotherapy for PTSD that we published in Nature Medicine. We are in the midst of our second phase three study. We anticipate by the end of 2022, we'll finish the second phase three study. And by the end of 2023, we'll have MDMA approved by the FDA. We think that the psilocybin will be approved by others a year or so after that. We'll have MDMA, we believe, approved in Europe and we'll start to globalize the healing potential of MDMA-assisted psychotherapy. And this will lead to psychedelic clinics. And we already have hundreds of ketamine clinics and they will be eventually administering ketamine, MDMA, psilocybin, 5-MeO-DMT, other drugs that come through the research pipeline. And at the same time, we will have increasing access for people outside of medical conditions and also outside of religious freedom frameworks. So that the goal is, of course, to spiritualize humanity, to spiritualize people. And we've got many, many people that do have clinical diagnoses particularly those that are depressed or anxious about dying. But we also have uh, even more people that have sort of lower level anxieties just from reading the newspaper or from thinking about what's happening in the world, but they don't fit a medical or a religious frame. And so we need to really help all sorts of people have legal access in safe, supervised ways, or even in unsupervised ways for people to explore their own consciousness. Mm -hmm.